Hello, welcome to Abaraxas Precipice, Moloch Gambit. This is uh, our third phase of our fun little uh, fence excursion. Uh, I'm John, I'm the game master of this thing apparently, because I, you know, I'm the one that bought all the books and did the stream and that's just how, that's just how role-playing games work, guys. If you buy the books, you're, you're the one in charge apparently. And you read them. I read them too. And you read them. Because yeah. <laughs> I buy the books. I the part, you're going to read them half the time. You say, I got them. And, you know, just yeah. by proximity and osmosis, I absorb the rules. Uh, the <laughs> dice. Remember, the rules are just a guideline on how to use the product recommended by the company. Um, tonight, uh, we are continuing our adventures out by the gate. Uh, some, of, some of the ramifications of this thing popping up. Um, and we, uh, the game's put up by Green Run Publishing before we get. Tonight, though, we are doing a giveaway. Uh, I want to go ahead and put that information into the chat. So tonight's word is cryo. Uh, we're giving oh, away yeah. cryo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's going to be a lot of it because by the end of it, you'll be cryo. All right. Um, we are uh, <laughs> cryoing. Cryoing, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, tonight's giveaway is a set of miniatures from uh don't hate but i think it's five five or six of them but it's a nice little set of kenku warband kind of a cool little set uh from their like they're doing this warband set now miniatures they're kind of cool um and uh, get you set up with those and then in addition if we hit our sub goal uh 50 uh 50 uh subs for the stream i will give away throw in a set of expanse role-playing game dice martian uh or you know they they roll bigger than the other one, the other dice uh, is what my understanding is. Uh, let me go and start my, let me manage my goal. Um, what's weird is I'm, I, I've learned how to manage my goal, but I haven't learned how to manage my expectations for myself. Um, so I got that going there, guys. And then I think, I totally forgot to pull up my script. I did have a script before I started this, which was kind of sad, so I kind of messed up on that. But uh, we want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon. It's a great way to get previews. Uh, we're actually going to uh, have some cool announcements about our stuff in October at the end of the stream. So please tune in and watch all that and the like. In addition, Jeff, I forgot to mention our giveaway. We're only making it's only eligible for uh, presence in the United States. Uh, but outside the United States, like uh, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll try to help you out with something if, if you do win. But um, we're trying to aim for people in the U.S. here for the physical giveaways. Okay, go to the opening credits. Anyone else have anything to say? How, how's everyone doing, man? We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Ready? For those that just joined us, too, we're part of Previ to our conversation before we got on air. It was just talking about how Scott shaved. That was like literally what we talked about <laughs> for 20 minutes. Ghost stash. Um, ghost stashing. Mm-hmm. I feel like ghost stashing is like an underrated term. <laughs> yeah. like we don't, I've never heard that term before. And now, like, I feel like I want to, like, ghost stashing, man. Like, uh, that's <laughs> fucking... Oh, here's something interesting. The Expanse is trending on Twitter right now. Oh, is it? Because, yes, because, uh,. A satellite impacted an asteroid. Oh man! Yeah, we had. Was that is that the one that happened earlier this week with NASA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really interesting. Yeah, the whole um, the Dart project. I watched that live, and that was dope. Yeah. Uh, we're practicing for Aeros people. Yeah, uh, so we're getting ready to deflect asteroids. It is happening sooner or later. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Hey man, good science fiction is only fiction for so long. Yep. True. All right, we're gonna be right back and. Sorry, we went a little longer there because we were nerding out talking about the DART project, which is a lot of fun. NASA, real <laughs> science is cool, too. 
All right, so speaking of which, speaking of moonshots, uh, yeah. the, the last time we left off the crew, you had gotten the message from Pope to meet you in a certain location, um, way outside the elliptical, kind of closer, not at the ring or past the ring, but kind of outside that way. Um, and I think the decision was to do this. Uh, you have a few days to go back to series and such uh, to prep for this mission, to prep for this meetup. Um, and it seems like the idea is to do it kind of under the cover of moving stuff for the OPA to Medina Station. Um, how do you do? You guys want to keep, try to keep this like like down wraps? Do you want to let anyone know, Myrtle? How do you want to do this? What, what kind of orders you want to issue? Because you are the captain. Yeah, I guess I should. Uh, hmm. I don't, I'm I'm thinking that we're not really gonna let anybody know because huh. uh, we don't really know who we might be able to trust with this information. And then, do you let the whole crew know? Because some of the crew is gonna figure out you guys. Each oh a yeah, bit. we'll tell. We'll talk. Talk to the crew. So huh. we'll bring everybody together. Okay. And. Uh, just kind of talk about what's happening, where we're going, and who's going to go on the away mission, and who's going to stay here, and right. instructions on what to do if things go, you know, toes up. Okay. And I think I think you determined that why it would not be leaving the ship, he would be for both his and others' safety. Yes. yes. <laughs> they have a lot of buttons over there. Oh, I can't be that many buttons. I'll push them all. Um. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, all right, so you guys get back to Sirius Station. Uh, you guys have the next round of gear to move out to the uh, out to uh, Medina Station, no problem. Uh, it's another you know few months trip, and the like. Not too bad. Um, is there any kind of like other stuff you guys want to take care of before you leave? Uh, stuff you want to get, basically. And the, the ship's fully stocked now too, and you guys have you know all your, your you have plenty of ammo, you got plenty of food, water. That's not an issue. The ship's in good shape. These last few trips have just been milk runs. Anything? Uh, we need any? Uh... I think we need to up, update our booze selection. We probably went through okay. that on the. This is true. Yes. Okay. Somewhere that fine tequila. Give me a. Give me a. Um... Or we'll get, uh, I'll, you're fine. You can you get you get the. Yeah, you guys, I can buy a nice buy. bottle for you, us. Yeah, you buy you buy a bit for the crew. I mean, it's gonna be two months trip. You might buy one want a bottle, but yeah, you buy a little bit there, and you guys are good to go. Um, okay, cool. So you're all set up. Uh, you head out, start head out of the ring. You go out the ring, drop off of Medina. They have you in and out. They're not like they're really not screwed around on Medina on Medina Station. They're like getting people in and out. Ships are coming in and out. Um, and one thing that's always kind of curious is that the only thing you see going out past Medina Station is like probes they're saying these little small little like uh they're not very big they're basically torpedoes with like sensors on them and they're sending them through no one no one has gone through one of the other rings yet um and then you have a you have two pairs of dreadnoughts uh from the two two un two uh martian dreadnoughts sitting right at the ring you have to transfer codes to them zenny you've talked to some of these people uh there's some guy on them that there's one on the martian ship you've talked to a few times by the name of patel you're like, all right, you, you know people by name now. It's like, <laughs> it's so close to my last name. <laughs> yeah, and like, it's also you're like, you know, I don't know. It feels like being on being on like almost like a first name first name basis with like a Martian officer at a large dreadnought. It feels kind of awkward, uh, you know. But um, they uh, they get you set up and everything, and everything moves super smooth. Uh, the logistics of this are apt. Everyone's got their eyes on it. Everyone's working for it. Um, News, the only news has kind of come through, if any of you guys are watching the news, is that there has been some, like, people are talk are, are really speculating about what's out there. Um, words getting out that there might be uh, habitable planets, um, stuff like that too. But at this point, it's mostly just, it's nothing's been confirmed. It's like distant images of planets. No one's ever like actually gone down to one and tested the atmosphere. Um, they're like saying, oh yeah, there's oxygen there. And they're like, how much is there? You don't know, you know, but it's there. Uh, <laughs> it there's, there's water, how much? <laughs> well, you don't know, but there's some water. You know, so it's, it's that kind of stuff where it's, it's you'd be, you know, a big risk trying to go down there. So anyways, um, you guys come out and uh, you divert to the meetup point and the like. Um, do you have anything else you want to kind of gear up before this, uh, going to do this meet? I mean, Cap XO, do you think we need anything? Take any precautions? Yeah. I would like if, if it's possible, do we have a way to put tracker 
a, tr- a tracker or a camera or something so I could see what's going on inside from where I'm at. I mean, you you could have like, I mean, you could, some of the data pad has cameras on it and everything like that too. Um, you guys just want to like leave one out of your pocket. Yeah, I'm pretty stealthy. I could probably uh, sneak one when nobody looks. I mean, it wouldn't be hard to like to like have like something mounted on someone's shirt. I mean, it's really not that hard. You guys have that kind of gear. It's pretty easy to pick up. I, I'd say you guys get that stuff on series. I mean, if the dime a dozen, it's, yeah, it's not going to be high quality. Like, because it's not going to be some high quality camera, but it'll do the trick. It's going to be one like a CRT TV. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Five frames a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, go, it's, I'll uh, go to. The it up. We'll pick one up. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what I want, I want to be able to watch. Tech Noir is, 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 is the shop in the expanse official, yes. Yeah. Yeah, go there. All right. So you guys stay on the ship. I definitely want to be able to see everything that's going on. So you come to the you pile it up to the meeting point and you kind of sit there and float in space. Um it's all zero G at this point, it's kinda of hitting this location. It's pretty arbitrary too. It's not like um based on where the elliptical is, you guys are way up outside of uh not past Uranus's uh, orbit, um, but you're um, n- not to the ring, so you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's it's like the black. There's nothing out here. Um, if you, uh, in addition to, I should also mention, you were instructed to turn your transponder off uh, for this part of the trip. Is that something you're up to do, Myrtle? Um, we're gonna have lots of questions to answer. Yeah. Depends on who you want to piss off more. Yeah. Um, no, I think we're good. We'll keep it on? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, everything's going to go tits up or it, it'll be fine. Okay. All right. Who knows what's going to happen? So you guys you guys get to the location. You're floating around there. You got the transponder going. Um, you, uh, you're letting, you know, you're basically letting, uh, Series know that you're back out that way, uh, sending out signals and everything like that. They, like other, the other ships know where you are and you're outside the elliptical. And um, most most people don't really give a shit, uh, but you do get a tight beam coming in from somewhere like that's not part of the elliptical. So you're guessing this is Pope's ship. Uh, Zeddy just pops up on your thing saying uh, you have a you have a message that's come that's come in. Um, did you want to pop it open or? Uh, I'll, uh, hail everyone else okay. Okay. <laughs> and say, uh, I think, uh, I think Pope is, uh, is sending a little message for us. And then I'll, pop, I'll just pop it. I won't wait for people. I'll All just right. make sure that like it pops so up it, and I it, can send it to it's, people. It's an audio message. And basically it sounds like, uh, kind of like, like instruct instructions from their, uh, flight person. They say, uh, Sinclair, turn, uh, turn off transponder, uh, and await instructions. Okay. It's like, what if you don't? I will, I'll do say, that now. I will say this too. I will say this. The one advantage of turning out the transponder to Myrtle is that it does make your ship harder to target torpedoes from distance. That's true. <laughs> so there is, so there is, a, there is an advantage. I will say that there is an advantage. I'm a pilot, not a tactician. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, you're just screaming at everybody. Hey, I'm here, including torpedoes. Hey, here we are. Please blow me up. <laughs> So yeah, they're they're saying that, and they give you a new set of coordinates. They're a little bit ways off. It'll probably take a few hours to get out that way, but um, sounds like they don't like people knowing where you are. Okay. You can turn it off, or oh yeah, yeah, right. I'm gonna right. turn it turn off. Turn off. Jet, you jet out for a few hours. Go to another location. Wait a few minutes. Tight beam comes in, and it says uh, OPS Sinclair uh, await escorts and. Uh, Wait, await escort and uh, make sure we don't see any weapons. Uh, basically, saying like, don't keep anything up. Uh, you will be docking. Like you said, please make sure your docking capabilities are prepared or ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll get ready. And I'm just like, everybody has their instructions. If something happens or if it goes wrong, mm-hmm. you know, we'll be fine. And- yeah, and everyone's kind of ready for battle stations. Like, if, if, if shit goes sideways, uh, the crews would get in their uh, crash couches and, like, juice up and do a hard burn the hell out of here. Um, absolutely. Okay, so they burn out the locations, just some arbitrary location, too. And you guys wait about maybe, like, an hour or so. And eventually, um, on the on the, 
it takes a second for the, for the ship to catch it, Zenny, but you do catch that there's a there's an incoming ship um, that is flying dark, so it's it's uh, it's it gets pretty damn close to you prior to um, you noticing it. Like if they have the engine, if they have they don't have is the drive. Is it one of going. the? Is it one of the? It's an asp, yeah. Smaller. It's, it's, yeah, okay. it's, it's it's you're pretty positive based on the whole uh, the way the hole shaped. It is the same exact ship you guys yeah. that pursued you last it's time. Not, it's not the giant. No, it's not, it's not the space. Thing. No, that thing, you guys, that thing, even that thing, like getting this close to the nose because it's big. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But the but their little fighter, their little uh, interceptor comes up, and it it uh, it puts in a, the, the interceptor puts a request into the ship, uh, Zenny, and so what it's doing is trying to do a handshake conversation, trying to handshake with the ship, and it looks like it's requesting to have the Sinclair uh, slave its controls to the Asp. Basically, that <laughs> your basically that your ship would then follow it. Uh, aligned uh, in steady pacing. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's not going to take over weapons. It's not going to take over the drive. You guys can shut the drive off, and you're also you also have the capability based on the permissions that it has uh, to relinquish control at any point moment. So if you guys wanted to, S, you know, GTFO there at any point, you could. Okay. Yeah, I'll just look. I'll just make sure that I look over all the parameters and make sure they're not requesting for any sort of give me, give anything. Me a, give me a security test. I have to roll dice in this game. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? Um, Baby's game. Math is great. Is uh, hmm, what are numbers today? Um, <laughs> that is ratios. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So you look at you look at the parameters, no problem, and it's in pretty run of the mill. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward okay. program. This is something like that often happens with escort ships. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to basically the, the way to make sure you don't come in super fast at their ship, but like can collide right? with it, especially because their ship is stealth, so your ship may not be able to recognize it really easily. Okay, oh. Myrtle, I you will... go with this. You, you give the okay to this. Yep. All right. the The ship the ship approaches, and eventually you um, the ships kind of align, and they start going off into position at a very like steady burn. It's not even like a 0.3 G burn. It's it's a pretty slow burn as you guys head out for a bit. Um, and it looks like they're, they're doing is trying to keep the uh, the burn at a minimum to try to prevent people from the elliptical seeing you guys. You burn out for a while, and uh, maybe for about like three hours or so. Um, and the other ship's not talking to you. You are welcome to try to hail it if you want to, but it looks like it's kind of just like. They're gonna. They're keeping quiet and just doing things by the book here. Um, everything they've they've offered to do has been above board. Uh, Zenny, you certainly can like if you want to. You can monitor uh, the Sinclair to see if it's been if they're trying to like actually try to hack your ship or trying to like. Enter oh, hundred, hundred percent. You, you hundred percent. You monitor the. Sh uh, give me another technology test, and you can uh, monitor that. Uh, what about what about Wyatt? What are you doing, man? He's hanging out in, on the on the flight deck, or what are you doing? Yeah, I'm just keeping really quiet. Not really saying anything, just watching, observing. Not very happy, okay. more or less. Yeah. Waxer, there ain't much for your, in terms of your duties. There ain't much to do. Like uh, you're just kind of want to sit and wait. Uh, you're waiting to do be the muscle on some on something like that. But uh, mm -hmm. you're told to be big and intimidating inside, but you're not inside yet. So it's, it's all waiting. I'm, I'm practicing in the front of a mirror just to remember how to be like intimidating. Yeah. Yeah, so you're see. all practicing okay. and like, uh, yeah. Listen, like, Pope. Yeah. yeah, yeah. McMichael's is like, McMichael's is like, like slapping parts of your muscles. But no, this yeah. one, make this one bigger. Like, oh, yeah. 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 You're, okay. you're, you're lopsided, man. No one's yeah. that lopsided this. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done anything like this. I'm so, atop yeah. them, not around. You gotta be, a, not, you wanna go over them, not around them. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right. I see Maria likes danger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right so you guys um you guys continue on and eventually I got an uh, 18 by the way i got an 18 oh you're fine yeah you you monitor this. this stuff and like you're waiting for them to add anything on there and all they have is that their ship's proximity things are like locked on you guys just to keep proximity make sure the ships don't collide um mm -hmm. you do know that that could be easily converted into information for like doing target locks with missiles or torpedoes mm -hmm. but I mean, you'd be able to hit them at this distance as well pretty quickly, too. You guys would just chew each other up. <clears> um, <throat> all right. So uh, eventually you come through and you can see that the uh, the controls eventually kind of start relinquishing into a docking sequence. They've, they've sent you guys a docking sequence 
to the cryo brand, which is now coming up on the screen a little bit. You guys can see the actual ship uh, in, in, uh, in proximity. And it's a big, large kind of round, it looks like a giant hockey puck almost, um, kind of in a weird shape with uh, thrusters on the bottom. Um, and you can see where the docking bay is and everything. But it looks like they're having you, um, they're having the, they fed the, the Sinclair automatic information to dock alongside this ship. How big is it as we approach it? Is it like, um, it's about, much bigger? It's about four times the size of your ship easily. Probably actually, well, no, probably closer to eight times because it'd be like it'd be like four Sinclairs on top of each other, and then another like two levels of Sinclair. But it's it's pretty damn big. Um, That's a big boat. It's not. I mean, it's not like a. It's not freighter big, but it's it's below a freighter. But you guys are a light freighter, so it's between those two basically. So that's a ship big enough to hold a lot of people in there. So you guys better be really careful. Yeah, I mean, but it's a science vessel. So this isn't like uh, largely what they have is kind of labs working in there and everything, too. Um, give. Why? Give me a security test. This should be good. I'm actually looking forward to this one. We got double fours. So. 15. Okay, um, I'll let you. I'll let you spend a little bit of fortune here to uh, get some additional information. Um, you you start looking at the you're looking at their ship and you're realizing they have stealth tech on the ship. You're realizing that that stealth tech is going to absorb any uh, signals you guys try to pass through. So that little camera trick you guys have ain't gonna work. You're not gonna be able to talk to them. They're not gonna be able to talk to you while you're while they're on there. <laughs> That's how stealth tech works, guys. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> We don't have to like the real science. Why, why, why must you make this hard science game so hard, John? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys need anything, I don't know how you're going to get a hold of me. I mean, I'm not going to know any well, soon. Well, he, he just wants to talk, yeah? So we'll hear what he has to say, and then we'll make sure to get back as soon as we can. I mean, if you get the chance, Waxer, if you just want to snap his neck... <laughs> I'll be fine by then. Uh, I don't know if Sorry, I can do Cap. it, but uh, yeah, the orders come through. <laughs> Just be safe and. Uh... Yeah, want to hear what this uh, this fellow wants to say? Yeah, this Koyo says. <clears throat> huh? Before we before we break him. <laughs> <laughs> you guys no going breaking to... anybody quite yet? No. <laughs> you guys going to like the zero G maneuvers? Or like low thrust maneuvers, um, you guys can crash couch out if you want to. Honestly, like I mean, you guys have been through worse docking maneuvers. It's pretty smooth too. Their their ship seems to have like um, the uh, the information they fed to the Sinclair is really good information. It's docking nicely with the ships and everything. You can feel the umbilical the, the umbilical coming out and, and the ships uh, seal up. You can hear the hiss and everything. But yeah, your your guys' the side of the airlock only opens up when you open it up. They don't have control of your airlock or anything. Like that. Um, but the docking formation goes up. The airlock's coming up clean. That it's giving you a signal. Um, so I heard uh, Zenny wants to. Zenny, were you going to try to bring any weapons on? Oh yes. Try to bring I'm bringing hand, two hand guns. Cannon. Two guns. I'm bringing my gun and my backup gun, which was Dingo's gun. Okay, so you got Dingo's little little pistol here. His little standard issue thing. That one's that one's hidden though. Okay. You got as that best one in your as I can. back, your waistband or whatever it is. Yeah, okay. somewhere, yeah, something like that. And the other one's more open because it's a big, it's a big hand cannon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyone else care, trying to pack? I, mean, I just I, got my stun gun. Yeah. Stun gun. And what about, yeah. what about you? Uh, I will try to, um, yeah, hide uh, some type of uh, maybe a hide like uh, we got a An baton entire rifle. An entire, entire rifle. rifle. So, the yeah. batons, so the batons are collapsible. They're, they're okay. those collapsible batons. Yeah, yeah. So you can actually oh. that one's actually the easiest thing for you guys to conceal. Okay, I'll bring a baton. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have. Then you get a stealth check from um, Zenny and a stealth check from Myrtle, and then uh, Waxer. You get a stealth check, and yours is a shit ton easier. <laughs> <laughs> I got a plus five. Stealth, you say? I don't have stealth. You got dexterity then. Which is weird. No dexterity. Do I have stealth? Oh, no. Drop dice. Okay, here we go. Oh, five. Oh god. Everyone's rolling. I love it. Let's see what the chaos. Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, yeah, uh, 18. And 18. I got, no, uh, pretty good. I got doubles with a four on the, uh, okay. which we'll call it dice. They are I good. got 15 double fours, four okay. on the hey. drama. Sure. Just like cat. <laughs> and then Zinni? 
11. That's not great. But I'm not necessarily... That's why I brought two guns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One's, the, one's the decoy. One's to be found, one's the de- yeah. One's exactly. the beat gun, yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Myrtle, you managed to hide your stun gun. Your stun gun's not too hard to hide because it doesn't have a lot of metal in it. It's mostly plastic with a little bit of metal parts in it. The baton's pretty easy. Honestly, on, on like a camera, it'll like pick up, or like on a scanner, it'll pick up like a giant bolt. Like they'll think it's just a big bolt in your pocket. Yeah. Is that a bolt in your pocket or you... Okay. <laughs> um, uh, let me pass, pass, right? Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Watch you get closer. Look, pa. Okay. Um, and Zenny, yeah, you you go to hide hide your iron, and it, it ain't hiding. Uh, you have the one open, and the one in your waistband kind of sticks out a little bit. Um, and you're, even with your flight or your kind of flight suit on a little bit, it still kind of sticks out. But uh, you come on up. They're 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 locked open. They're ready. You can see on the other side um, through through the the cameras on the Sinclair. It looks like there is a there is a pair of armed guards on there. They're wearing uh, heavy armor with um, like security armor, and they have they do have assault rifles, um, but they're not standing at them pointed at anything. They're just kind of standing at like the ready. Uh, they have them kind of you know, down like this and everything like that to uh, proper form. Um, you you see this on the on the the cameras too wide, and it's pretty. You're pretty sure it's um, these guys are professional. Like these guys are might be ex Martians. They might be ex UN. They they have they have military training. They're not just some jabronis off the street. Um, I'll just reiterate to be careful as they're all leaving. All right, now you calm. So be careful, guys. Sorry. Right. Um, what do you guys? How do you want to open the gate? How do you want to open up the door here, Myrtle? Who do you want it first? What do you want to do? Um, I'll go ahead and uh, go first, okay. just because he knows me. Doors and open. has not met anybody else. Doors oh open. yeah. <laughs> the the umbilical. Yeah, yeah. I like how you guys hate this guy. You never met him. Uh, <laughs> why we absorbed he why sounds, it, he sounds through, bad through, yeah. yeah through osmosis we absorbed why it's hate um <laughs> the uh uh here's his propaganda okay so you um as you kind of come out the umbilical uh the soldiers there they they don't really move um another person comes up it looks like kind of like a someone that's not, not an officer they're not wearing like an officer uniform but they are wearing kind of dress clothes this is not pope though you're, you're sure of and uh they come up and uh, come forth with like a to shake your hand. They're not holding anything. You can see they have a data pad like on their like on their belt or something like that. Um, but they're wearing kind of a nicer, not a suit, but like a nicer kind of like outfit. And uh, they come up to you and they go, uh, Captain Myrtle, and they go to like shake your hand. Yay! How how's it going? Do you shake their hand? Yeah. Okay. And you guys, you kind of nice hands. Uh, quite quite well. Thank you so much for making your way to the Cryo Brand today. We know this is. Uh, I'll, uh, Mr. Pope knows this was a substantial trip for you. Yeah, yeah, it's a little awkward, but uh, we'll make it work. Excellent. And uh, he looks and he looks at the. Uh, he says, um, "Will uh, Mr. Thompson be joining you today?" Um, no, not today. Mm, excellent. Well, I, I, we understand the need to keep to uh, keep a command structure in place on the ship, so com- we fully understand. And uh, this is uh, Zenny, your communications officer, and I believe Waxor, your uh, payload specialist. Yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, we have uh, an agenda today. We have a, a little list. He kind of pulls out his data pad. He says um, of things to do today. Um, we would appreciate if you relinquish any weapons prior to boarding the Cryo brand. Um, you can leave them with our, our security team here. They are more than happy. Oh sure, I can do that. Are you are you lying? Uh no. Okay, all right. So, I, I will let them. Uh, I will let them have my stun gun. Okay. Just smiling away, uh, like everything's you, all good. You come on up and, uh, you come on up and they, uh, Zenny and Waxer, do you guys up? Do you guys stay behind the, the captain a bit, or how far are you uh, behind him? Or do you want up? Uh, yeah, I just I look at you know I stay, I'm behind the captain, but I I offer nothing like yeah you know, nothing right. today just here yeah I'm just gonna kind of do a you know just kind of make it, make it you know a, a big thing of like oh here you go my big old weapon it's yeah zit zit yeah, yeah. Like, here you go if you have to have it you know kind of to kind of deflect off the two of them okay you go up and, and you you pull pull it out of your pocket and uh, hand it over to them and they. Uh, they go ahead and they put it in a box there and stuff like that too. There's like a little secure box and the like. And then uh, as you come through, you can see there's some sensors. There's, there's like a, um, a scanner set up here. And they um, uh, go through the scanner and uh, 
you can see like a screen where they're looking at the scan. They can see your data pad on you, but they don't. They see the Chocolatiers kit and all that kind of stuff, and uh, they kind of like okay. And uh, one of them gives a thumbs up. You come on through. Um, who wants to go next, Wax or, or Zenny? You won't. I I I'll step right. through. Wax, I go, you come yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. I got I got an injury too, and uh, I don't know. You might see some weird stuff in the X-ray. <laughs> They go through and they, they scan and they, uh, one of them kind of looks around and you can see where they pick up the the baton on the thing, but they kind of look at it for a second and uh, it's like in a jumble, like maybe like some other tools in your pocket or whatever it is. Um, just like a bunch of other crap and they kind of like, oh, okay, and he's, yeah, he's good. Then you come up, they can see your pistol on your side mm -hmm. and they're like, uh, uh, they go up and offer the box to you so you can relinquish the weapon. Uh, I empty out the chambers into the box and right. I put the gun back in my holster. Okay. Uh, they, um, so you empty out the magnum rounds and mm -hmm. uh, put back the holster and they kind of say, uh, one of them, he, one, the, the one guy who's talking to Myrtle, he kind of goes on his comm real quick and he kind of starts talking kind of low. You can't really hear him. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you'll have to go through it. Uh, we'll, please, uh, please, miss, uh, we'll have you go through it. This uh, puzzle. We'll have you come through, and uh, you can uh, do the scan. You come through the scanner. Hmm. <laughs> I'll take out the other gun before okay, you the other gun. put that in the box. Okay, you put that one in the box. But I'm too. keeping mine, okay. and then I'll go through. They they go up and they say okay, and then you go through the the thing. Uh, did you have any? Are you trying to hide any ammo on your body on your persons? I'm trying to hide at least one. One bullet. <laughs> at least one bullet. Okay, yeah. one bullet. Okay. It comes through, and they, the thing kind of, the thing kind of, you see some dings on it. And they say, um, uh, "Miss Pazal, we'll, we'll have to uh, relinquish you of all your ammunition. We understand the sentimental value of your of your sidearm, but uh, we'll have to really give your pistols." And you can tell that they have like sniffers in here and stuff too. They're picking up the particulates off the bullets. Uh. <laughs> I turn to whomever addressed me um, and point to the two who have very heavy rifles and say, uh, are they going to relinquish their weapons too? Well, you see the... the, the this is a talk after all, right? Oh, it is. But you see the discrepancy is that uh, they, will not be a, they will not be joining us on the rest of uh, the trip here. They were just for the initial entrance to the ship. In addition, uh, their bullets will not pierce the hull of our ship. I'll just like take out the bullet and just put it, put it <laughs> in, in the box. I take it out and I swallow it. <laughs> <laughs> you got eight put hours, buddy. You got eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay. They, you relinquish the bullet and they say thank you. And they put it all in a box and lock it up. And then, um, they, yeah, so they, they let you on through. Um, the gentleman says, uh, so yes, um, I am. Uh, I gave a name. Was it Patel? Yeah. Oh, he's like, I am Stid Patel, and I will be your accompaniment escort on the Cryo brand, uh, one of the most advanced science ships ever created. Although I have, we, we suspect that Earth is, and Mars are creating some more, even more advanced ones now with the uh, new world. Um, please, let us come through, and uh, I'll take you through the, uh, the sections, give you a quick tour, and we should go meet with uh, Mr. Pope here briefly. It's all necessary. Well, you see, security here is utmost. It isn't just uh, your safety, but also the safety of our uh, resident scientists. We actually have over uh, forty scientists on board engaging in uh, a experiments. various experiments. Experiments Ex on Beltas, yeah. Oh no, we have no human test subjects here. That's well, not what he I takes heard. a second. He takes a second and says, "Well, te we technically we have one test subject, mm. but." I just um, He's in charge. Right. So we, 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 I feel that the ethics work out. If, if, if he's willing to pay for it all and do it all, it's, I feel the ethics of it are apt. Uh, we do have one request for all of you. And this Besides is very- Besides relinquishing our weapons. <laughs> that was uh, another, and honestly, another. this request is much more important than you relinquishing your weapons. Do not mention the opening of the ring gates any of the other staff. They don't know. Is there mm -hmm. a reason? They don't know. 
How can they not know? You'd be lying. Well, we've been out the here. The entire universe knows. <laughs> you see, we've been out here, but we certainly uh, keep a tight lid on the communiques and communications that come in and out of um, Your friend, uh, Yakiv Butenko, as does know, and has been under strict instructions not to mention it to the rest either. And Mr. Pope knows as well. Is However, okay? Oh, yeah. What's that? I said Yakiv. He okay? Yakiv. Oh yes. Um, we'll we'll meet Yakiv here briefly. Uh, in fact, he actually he was actually asked. Uh, he was waiting to have his uh, lunch till you arrived. He thought he'd have lunch with you all t today. Cool. Okay. Yakiv asked for it. That's okay. No. So. Um, yeah. And he says, um, "No, because we, you see." Mr. And I think I'm at liberty to say this, but Mr. Pope's at a unique crossroads. Um, if news of the of 1300 New Worlds gets out to our science staff, we don't believe they'll want to stay, and we are worried about what they might do. So as you can see, one of the concerns here is the finality of the Cryobrand's fate. And we don't want them to get too rambunctious regarding uh, the situation and You don't want your big expensive project to go up in smoke? No. No, you don't. And um, <laughs> I suppose that's partially why you're here, is to look into methods of salvaging it. Uh, Mr. Pope has... Uh, so, uh, might I take you to the galley? And right now you guys are in like a, it, it, it's like an airlock setup and it's where our docking bay, where there's like basically cargo moves through here. And you can see like the different cargoes they have. You can see a lot of the um, containers are empty, like a good portion of them have been eaten up, but they, they have they had a food storage here and other material storage here. And they've been going through it a bit. Um, to, uh, Do I see anything unusual just being familiar with like- give me, a, give, me a, give me a scene test. Okay. I have seeing and evaluation, which is the same. Well, okay. Once you see it, then you can tell if it's worth something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you got to see it first, though. Yeah. All right. I got a uh, okay, so that's 16 and a 6 on the drama. Oh, very nice. All right. So you go ahead and you start, uh, you kind of look at the cargo stuff, and it's a lot of food stuff. Um, there are some that have what you suspect are like... Uh, reagents and stuff you'd use for experiments, science stuff. You don't really know what it is individually, but you've seen sciencey stuff like that, especially when it's coming into Ganymede. Um, and then also even like uh, one of them does stick out. It's like a cart. It's like it's like a series of cartridges, like these big cartridges like this that are used for um, you plug them into like uh, synthesizers to basically synthesize certain chemicals for experimentation. Okay. Um, so it looks like they are doing. You, it, it does line up with what they're telling us a science vessel. This is lining up. What you don't see in this cargo bay, you don't see torpedoes, you don't see munitions, you don't see any of that kind of stuff. Okay. Where, like, your guys' ship, you see torpedoes in the cargo yeah. bay and stuff like that. Okay. I make a note. And you can see also, as you guys leave the, the docking bay, uh, the air, their airlock seals up, and the two, uh, the, two sold, the two military guys just stay back there. They're just sitting there armed armed arm, um, kind of watching that door in case it tries to be breached. And they are maintaining docking with the Sinclair, um, but they've locked up their airlock by all means. And in addition, they, um, uh, you're also noticing here, Zenny, as you as you would, there's lots of cameras everywhere. They have, this, this place is heavily monitored, everything. Good high quality stuff. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. Uh, he takes you to, to an elevator in the center and says, um, well, we shall be going up to the up, up a few levels uh, to the galley where uh, we have a private area for you and Mr. Butenko. All righty. He spoke, uh, he, uh, he spoke highly of you. Uh, Waxor and uh, uh, Zenny. Yeah, I, I likewise. Uh, that's a good guy right there. He's been one of our most promising minds on the ship. I have to say. Um, but we're hoping you can uh, enjoy his company a little bit. I'm sure it'll be a good morale boost for him as well. You guys get, He gets in the elevator and he, he holds the door for you guys to get in the elevator and everything. Um, you guys can get in the elevator. Uh, is he coming in? You coming yeah, in? Yeah, he's in the us? elevator. He's, a ho oh, he's yeah. holding the door for oh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, you, also, you also notice that like between levels here, they do have some of the levels have stairs going to the next level and some have, have ladders. So it's kind of an interesting kind of zigzag to paint. But there are, um, it looks like three elevators that run the entire length of the ship. So you guys can get up and down pretty easily. Um, but yeah, he gets in and uh, you guys go up for about probably like five, six levels. And it, it, it pings off and it opens up right into the galley. Uh, both doors open up. There's a door in front of you, a door behind you. And you can see that you are in a galley with about six tables. Um, a nice kind of, uh, much nicer than the Sinclair in terms of like the food options and everything like too. They have lots of synthesized stuff. Um, stuff being prepared. They have like a thing that will actually form the food into real shapes versus just coming out as like, you know, bachelor chow type stuff, you know? Um, kibble. Uh, yeah. You know, it, com it comes in squares. Uh, <laughs> you get rounded squares or you get squares. Um, but um, yeah, you, and as you kind of, kind of you see uh, a person in a, a lab coat with a t-shirt on, and he's got kind of a beard, some little Walter hair. He he sees you go. He's as soon as you guys come in, he sits. Hey, ah, Danny Waxar, it's so good to see you. Hey. You see, but you see Yakiv at a table uh, not too far from the elevator. Yeah, I will like. Uh, I hit. Yeah, we head over there just okay. as. Uh, you guys head over, and he goes. Yeah. He goes. Hey, come on. <laughs> Super enthusiastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. He's, like, Very. <laughs> he's like, hey, Patel, Patel, Patel uh, can't believe, thanks, Patel, for setting this up. It's so nice for me to come over here and talk to me first. He's like, yes. He's like, I'm um, honestly, uh, Mr. Pope thought it'd be a good idea for you guys to see a familiar face, uh, prior, a friendly, familiar face, and have, you know, have a little meal before you uh, have the formal meeting with uh, our uh, CEO here, our head of the, head of the project. Can we, uh, I look at, I want to look at Patel. Let's see if we can talk to him privately. Sorry. Yeah, Patel, <laughs> Patel's like, um, we'll do enjoy. Um, and you do know there's cameras and there's probably microphones. Um, mm -hmm. And Patel says, um, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to head over. Uh, he gets back in the elevator and says, I'm going to head up to uh, operations and prep the rest of your meeting. Um, Akif, please uh, let them partake of whatever goods they want to. He says, oh, yeah, no problem. It'll be good. And like the uh, Patel gets on the elevator and dings up and starts going up. And you guys are alone in the galley of the ship. A very nice guy. This is like, it, honestly, like we're like this is like it, it. It's probably almost nicer than some of the officer uh, galley like eating eating areas on most of the big ships. This is nice. And it can probably <laughs> hold like it. It can hold. There's enough chairs here for probably uh, easily like thirty two people. With no, I mean, and you're, and you're talking not elbows to elbows. Like, they'd have plenty of room. What kind of vibes is good old Boutanka given? Yeah. Uh, why don't, why don't, I'm going to let you probe him a little bit before you get... He's just kind of looking around. He's, like, super excited. Um, he actually had some food. He's like, yeah, he's like, well, you guys got to come over here and try these chips. They, they we, we got this, like, really cool, like, uh, chip maker. They come out nice and crisp, almost like they're almost like they're from Earth. And he, like, he starts, like, putting the button, and, like, eventually these, like, these, like, crisp chips come out. Like they're all uniformly shaped and salted and potatoey, and, and he's like, "Yeah, you gotta try these ones out. These are really good." He puts them on the table, and uh, he's like, "I got. They can even do a barbecue flavor. It's pretty cool." Okay. Uh, uh, give me. You can uh, give me an, em a, an empathy test if you want to, uh, Zenny. You know why we're here. <laughs> Is that what you gotta say to him? <laughs> As you yeah. gotta put your hand on his back. You know why we? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Um, why they why they bring us here? <laughs> What'd you get, Zanny? Uh, which what is this used? Under this would be under perception. Perception, okay. Um, six, seventeen. Okay, yeah, I mean, he's pretty excited. Uh, you can tell he's pretty happy about having you here. Um, he probably hasn't talked to anyone else on the ship for months, if not a year. He's probably been here for a while. And you're the first new face you've seen in a long time. Hmm. Are you ready to get off this thing? <laughs> it's like, oh man, he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, it's a, you know, it's it's been good. Uh, the work's great. The tech they have is amazing. Uh, Mr. Pope's given us some really interesting problems to try to solve. But uh, yeah, no, I'd love to get back uh, plant side and do some cool stuff like that. But this this news, he's like, I I we we're kind of Pope was kind of showing me you guys actually were like in there. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. you, mean like? the, you mean the ring? No, the I'm ring, kidding. yeah. He's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. The he's he kind of laughed and he said like he's like no one can hear us. We're we're locked. We're locked up right now. We're not getting in and out of here right now. Nothing. 
I was gonna tell you, he's like, I'm gonna be real with you guys. It's just, we're not getting in or out of here. So don't worry about it. No one else is coming in, so. You a prisoner? Um, it's more of a contract. I signed a contract. I yeah, um, I hate to tell you this. Uh, you're in the middle of nowhere. Huh? Uh, on a ship that no one knows about. Mm -hmm. Um, you're not a contractor. You can't just leave. Well, no, I can't win my win my my contract up. I don't be wrong. I did I did sign up for the duration of it, so I am in it to win it. But I mean, he looks to Myrtle. He goes, I mean, come on, come on, uh, Captain Myrtle. You, you know, Captain Cooper. He, you know, you, you were in the military. I mean, you knew how it was. You'd go deploy out, and you couldn't really go anywhere for months. I mean, I don't I don't view it as any different than that. I signed up. Oh. So. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. How, how do you so, how do you feel about that one, Cat Myrtle? Is, is that like a fair? Do you think yeah, that's you know, it's it's kind of fair, but I still think that it's a little off <laughs> because this is not a military <laughs> vessel, and I can understand being under contract mm -hmm. and you know not wanting to break a contract and all that stuff, but to say he can't leave. You know that that doesn't well, sit right. Well, he can with me. leave, but at the end, of course, he could leave yeah, if they ever end. If it ever ends, but what if it doesn't end? Yeah, Poping, he changed his mission. Yeah. Well, he's like, you're right, and, but we have uh, all of us have another six months here. But it seems like uh, things have changed, and Mr. Pope needs to pivot that, and he's kind of got a concern on that. Um, but you know what? What's that you're doing anyway? Yeah. Well, what I'm doing is we, so uh, we have kind of a, a, it's less a sample and more of like a, like a, some really highly detailed scans. Um, Mr. Post provided us of uh, the protomolecule. And uh, we are, uh, you know, we're kind of, um, I'm going through and looking at it and seeing how it works in terms of the biology of it. Um, I'm trying to figure out some some uses for it and some ways to to, to how it kind of operates and how it functions and how it does what it does. Um, unfortunately, um, we haven't been able to get access to a direct sample, although we believe Mr. Pope does have access to one. Seems he's a little hazy with the with that thing. Hmm. This is that stuff. Um dangerous oh oh dear god yes it's like absolutely um yes yeah, so, well you see um i'm not supposed to say anything he's a little sensitive about it but um uh, mr pope uh, when he had the event the events uh that captain cooper was, was involved with back on luna uh mr pope was infected himself actually um and the infection got to his arm However, though, um, you might say he applied a cryogenic tourniquet to it of sorts. Uh, you see, he, Mr. Pope's had access, he's been uh, developing cryogenic technology for decades now and uh, has access to the best, the best out there, uh, best possible, and was able to um, cryogenically seal his arm where the, where the infection occurred prior to it getting any further into his body. Um, and with some advancements to his uh, tech and some uh, consultations, he's managed to keep it at bay. I mean, you have to remember the the, the proto molecule was found on Phoebe, a ball of ice, prone to freezing. It freezes nicely, honestly. You don't have to hit it too. You don't have to hit it too cold. Yeah, but uh, so why 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 he want to talk to us though? I don't understand. Well, that's actually my. I think um, two reasons. And uh, I, can, I can I can speak to one of them uh, for sure. I got, I had a little um, incident, a little little panic incident, and that's when I reached out to you, you all a few months back. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Thinking you could help us, I put that little message in the, the message out there, and um, that didn't go over too well. Uh, Mr. Pope didn't appreciate that, but at the same time, he respected it. He, he kind of understood where I was coming from. And he, I don't know, I feel like he saw something in me when I, when I did that. He could see a certain level of talent and ingenuity. And I, I really, and uh, he's, he's definitely taking much more interest in what, I, what my capabilities now are. Um, 
And uh, I think what it comes down to is that he uh, he knows that you're old. That's an exceptionally vague thing that you've said there. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. He's well aware that of, of the actions you took to rescue me and to problem solve. And uh, unfortunately, uh, his staff is a little not keen on that. We got security people. We have there's some good pilots, there's some good mechanics. We have a lot of great scientists. But we don't have people like, I don't like you guys. I mean, you guys went into the ring and survived, came out. Um, that's more yeah. than a lot of people could say. And uh, honestly, that's the number one predictor of success. If you survived a harsh incident like that once, you could probably do it again. Well, so, uh, not everybody hmm. survived. No. Yeah, success doesn't... Surviving yeah. does not just mean success. And not everybody want Pope to survive either. I hate to break that to you. <laughs> Yeah, um, I do know that uh, Mr. Pope has um, uh, he has that whole uh, being dead thing going for him. It's kind of working against him a little bit. He was I, I think he's hoping you guys can kind of get around that. But honestly, I'm not sure what his plan is at this point. So what I'm hearing from you is Pope wants us to fix all his problems. And I look up at whatever right. camera is in here mm -hmm. and like make direct eye contact with whatever camera's in here because he mm -hmm. can't fix it himself. No, he can't. And he knows he can't. But I think he's got an interesting proposition for you too. Uh, mm. I don't know what it is, but I, I can't imagine it not being interesting. Well, that's going to be a, yeah, he better have an interesting one, yeah. Well, interesting could mean a lot of things, so... Mm -hmm. So um, why are we sitting here, then? I, I, I thought you guys would like some chips, and he kind of points to the <laughs> chips. We do. <laughs> no, we, chips. Wanted to, we wanted to talk to this to this fool and leave. Is anyone going to eat a chip? That's my question. And, and he keeps no. eating a, he eats a chip. Oh, he I'm eats eating one. nothing. <laughs> yeah, and that's eating. Uh, not hungry right now, but... Uh, yeah, we're more ants, uh, you know... Antsy to get this over with. Talk to this Pope. Yeah. Wow. He'll lucky if I don't bring his arm back to the ship for Wyatt. <laughs> uh, I don't think anyone would be lucky if he did that, actually. Uh, <laughs> he's like, okay, well, um, then he, he goes, uh, he goes, he looks at the king like, Patel, I think, I think we're, the, the crew here's uh, done with our lunch. And you, yeah. wait a second, and uh, the, the elevator mentioned dings and comes up, and Patel comes up, he's like, oh, okay, well, uh, Shall we uh, ascend to the uh, to Mr. Pope's uh, quarters? Yeah, Captain, you ready? Yep. We do it. Uh, before, like, as I stand up, uh, I just look to <laughs> Botenko and I just say, "You take care of yourself, okay?" Oh, absolutely. He's like, uh, I mean, he's like, the the stuff that letting us work on here is amazing. But the you know, uh, Mr. Pope's been gracious enough to even let us use his gear to work on our own stuff. I got this chiral inversion. Theory I'm working on, I think it could revolutionize everything. I just put my hand up. <laughs> you know, I don't care. Okay. I look at Zenny. I'm like, hey, he's the engineer we need. Maybe we gotta get him. We tell, <laughs> yeah, Cap, we need this. We need this kid. <clears throat> and he he kind of waves as you. Uh, he's like, okay, well, thanks, and it's nice, nice seeing you guys. Um, thanks again for getting me off of uh, off of Hygia. Yeah. Ah, glad you found yourself on another ship that you're a prisoner of. Yeah, sorry about your friends as the door closes. <laughs> that's, that's why I forgot about that shit. Yeah. It's like, uh, is, this now, is this a rescue mission now? <laughs> hey, you got your friends on this ship? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone we should keep an eye need, out for? Whose heads I need to bust open? Yeah, yeah that's okay. <laughs> so you guys, um, you guys get on the, the elevator Patel and he goes, okay. Um, before we egress the uh, elevator, uh, simple rules. Um, this level is equipped with uh, knockout gas. Uh, if your heart rates jump to a significant degree, the knockout gas will deploy. Uh, Mr. Pope is kitted up, has his sarcophagus kitted up where he will not go unconscious during the knockout gas. Sarcophagus? Um, <laughs> so, what's up? No, no. 
He's like, that so please, just... uh, and try to keep try to keep a uh, two meters distance from Mr. Pope at all times as well. Okay. <laughs> so we got a, this show a warm meeting we're walking into. <laughs> so, so you know, he's just like he's like nothing personal. He's like it's just this is an operating procedure. Um, I think this entire thing is personal, and you don't have to lie to us anymore. Yeah. And he, he, you guys come up and he opens up into this level, and this level is like decorated. There's like stuff on the walls. It's gorgeous. There's like kind of quasi plant life growing out of the walls. Um, rather nicely kept. Um, just, I mean, really nice stuff. Really nice stuff. Uh, Patel kind of walks in and walks through and says, um, "Well, uh, you'll be meeting with Mr. Uh, Mr. Pope here." And he points like a, there's like a desk at the, in the at the room, and then there's like this uh, there's like a series of kind of not even like not chairs, but more of like couches, and we're talking like real earth couches, not like crash couches. And he says, uh, "Please have a seat, and make yourself comfortable, um, and uh, Mr. Pope will be right with you." And he kind of walks past the desk to go in the back room. I'll have a seat, but I won't be comfortable. I'm not gonna <laughs> sit. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I, I like stand like behind the cap to the side almost. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll I'm eat. looking like I'm not concerned, okay. but I am really concerned. I'll eat these chips, but I won't enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you guys, they kind of, they kind of come off and um, Mr. Patel comes back and so Mr. Pope, uh, Mr. Sebastian Pope and Pope comes out. Pope's left or his, his left arm is completely encased in this like almost box like coffin thing you saw in the photos. Um, it right. goes down a little bit past the length of his arm. You can see there's different meters on it, different plugins and stuff like that too. You're guessing it is powered somehow. Um, and uh, he's, but he's well dressed aside from that. Uh, and it seems like he kind of has his outfits tailored to work with that. So they kind of they kind of strap on somehow. And um, he walks in and uh, stops for a second, looks at Myrtle, and looks over and looks at Waxor. His eyes do not leave Waxor. Hmm. <laughs> and he, he starts wink, walking. Wink at him. <laughs> he starts walking kind of closer, and he goes, "Mr. Du Chang, right?" I look at it like Cap and Zenny, and I'm like, uh, "Yeah." Would you Would you mind standing up for me? Uh, I am standing. Oh, you are standing. Okay. He's yeah, yeah. walking. He's standing. He goes. He walks. He goes. He goes, uh, he, he like lists off a series of like, of like words and then says, and then says, uh, uh, release, um, <laughs> he says, he says, release, <laughs> release security protocol, uh, four for subject three. And he then approaches less than two meters to you. Like he gets close to you. I said, Hey, Hey, I thought, uh, I, well, actually in my pocket, I'm just going to like extend my baton. I'm gonna, you can't extend your I'm pocket. I want to stand up also and just go, hey, okay. what's happening here? And he, he looks at you and he goes, wouldn't believe it if, I, if I didn't see it. No touchy. And he's not touching you, but he's like looking at, he's looking at your height. He's like looking up at you and he's like, you're a Nephilim. You're, you're a product of Project Nephilim. Oh, I like, I look at us. And he looks at Patel and he goes, how the hell do we not know about How the fuck do we not? He's like pissed. He's like, how the fuck do we not know about this? How do you know about it? You get any he's closer, i pick you up by your neck. <laughs> he's like, no, he, he says, and he, he looks back at you and he says, he says, I am well aware of your, uh, I am well aware of your physical prowess uh, from that project, uh, Mr. Du Chang. I will say this, uh, my, the ship security protocols may be off, but he kind of, he kind of gestures to the, the, what he calls the sarcophagus on his arm. The sarcophagus is security protocols are not. And I will be clear if you um, should my heart stop or should uh, any damage come to this. I suspect every single person on this sh on this ship will die. It might just be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> and I smile. I, like smile I, I take it. I, I take it, Michael, you haven't had enough characters die to the proto molecule. Is that, is that what it is? <laughs> 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 no, this will just be from an explosion, I'm sure. <laughs> so yeah, he kind of, I'm like, man, you really, you really got a fetish here, buddy. Like, <laughs> Mike Pitt, sure, Thanks. I'll jump again. Yeah. All right. So he kind of, he kind of looks at you and he says, uh, I would, we would love to get some samples um, and and hear more about your story, Mr. Duchang, before you leave today, or before you, before you leave the ship. Uh, we'll see about that. Uh... 
Yeah, I want to know more. I'll let you know about Nephlin, but uh, why are we here? Well, um, and he's kind of saying, he, he's just kind of shaking his head, uh, or he kind of says, um, he kind of looks, uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting such to see uh, a miracle of science in front of me today. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very kind. I've never been called that before. Yeah. yeah. I guess you know I'm a big guy blush. Um, so yeah, he uh, he goes um, he goes to sit back down. He sits down at his desk, and you can see like he like, he has like a setup on the side of the desk for the for the thing to kind of rest. And he goes, um, "Well, things have changed. I'm sure you know. Everything's changed." Um, I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed Mr. Thompson couldn't join us, but, um, I understand he would have, uh, issues, uh, being in my presence. And I understand where your distaste for me come from, comes from, uh, Captain Cooper. I hope so. <laughs> I would hate for you to forget. <laughs> well, trust me, I won't. Um... As you may know, it's been my dream to be the first to see a star with the naked eye, to reach for them and find them. And I think that um, a dream of mine's gone. That one I had since I was a child. And you guys are guessing Pope's like in his 60s now. He's, he's getting up there. Um, that dream's gone. Um, every single person that's going to want to is going to be able to see a star with their own, a new star with their own eyes whenever they want to. I give it a year and a half, two years, people will be on its side. Um, you know, my next dream would, would have been to be the first to set foot on one of these worlds. That's not going to happen either. And I accept that. I accept that my dreams will not come true. But that isn't to say I don't want to do something and leave an impression. You can say what you want about Jules Pierre Mal, but his mark on history here is forever. And while I don't aspire to genocide such as, as he enabled, nor the brutal attacks on military forces as he did on Ganymede, I'm interested in, some, in, in having a future. Uh, reintegrating myself into this whole uh, play of things. Um, as I ho heard you talk about with Yakiv, uh, you're well aware that the scientists on board and uh, Patel and Forney, the scientists on board, are not aware of the New Worlds. I have that information for them. So they put, uh, if they get wind of it, they will want to leave this place sooner than later. And we cannot leave until my fate is more secure. Hmm. That's where you come in. This is where I am now asking you for help. Oh, the hell spill it out. That's it? Yeah, just spill it mm. out. What is it that you want? You're already lying to your own crew. So well, you own he, he says, I don't think I'm lying. I, I'm so much as I'm oh, trying to keep them focused. You are lying. You are lying. No, no, you are trying to keep them focused on your own selfish gains. You of course, they're going to want to leave here and your, your stupid pet project. Oh, yeah. Or oh, if you believe in it so much, you tell them, yeah? And then you see if they want to stay and help you because you've been such a great boss and captain. <laughs> <laughs> He kind of laughs. He says, the problem I have is that the ones that would want to leave, I don't have a way to get them off the ship. We take them. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure people on Sirius will suddenly wonder why several dozen scientists uh, from Earth and Mars just showed up out of nowhere. Uh, I'm sure Anthony Dawes mm -hmm. will have questions. If not, he'll recruit. Sure. He might tell. He might recruit them. There's a few stories coming out of uh, Sirius Station regarding uh, captured uh, scientists. Um, well, let me put it this way. I think I have a plan for it. Um, this science vessel is set up where it could deploy, uh, excursions onto planet, onto one of these planets. It could deploy, be ready to settle up and maintain a small settlement for a bit. But if we were to, uh, put together one of these colony ships that are being put together around Ganymede, along with this science vessel, 
I believe we could set up a colony that could last for easily years without uh, inter without any kind of uh, interference. With the brilliant minds on board, we could we could do this readily. However, there is the issue of finding a world and the issue of getting access to one of world. That's where I'd like your help. Okay. Well, you still didn't tell us what it is you want us for. Fair enough. Uh, well, the Martians and the and the Earthers are sending in a, sending a lot of these probes out. They are making sure that these probes are relaying their data back through uh, the Venus station, and then relaying it back through up through uh, the various satellite networks, which and then they they go back to uh, Mars or Earth where the information is decoded, analyzed, and figured out. My issue is that while we can get intercept, the, intercept these tight beams, we can't decrypt them. And I am interested in accessing this probe data. And uh, there's a few ways forward for this. Are you willing to hear me out about my ways forward or? You know, I think we've been waiting for a long time to hear exactly what it is that you right. want from us or we'll All just right. we'll just head out because. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, one is to pass forward I, 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 our analysis. One, you go to Mars, you find one of their data centers where they act, where they've analyzed this information. You steal it. You steal a substantial amount of data. You bring it and you bring it back to me. Zenny starts laughing. And he kind of looks at Zenny and he says, your laughter is well placed. The laughter is well placed. That is an extreme idea, and one I don't think uh, I, I have minimal uh, confidence in success of. The other one actually deals with a place that you have a bit more experience engaging in, uh, we'll say, spycraft. Um, you remember the, uh, I believe her name was Diana, Agent Diana? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you did a little bit of work for Agent Diana on Callisto. And Callisto being the home of the shipyards for the Martian Navy means they have access to parts. One part specifically is a Marsh is our Martian decryption modules. Getting access to one of these would allow us to figure out what the probe data is saying and find a world. The other part of our plan would be getting through the ring at Medina Station and such. Um, that one, we don't have enough. Inf we, we, we've got some specs about the inside of the ring, but you're the ones that have actually approached Medina Station and actually have been on it um, been in transit of the ring. So honestly, you're the expert on that topic. But I think first finding a world that we could actually utilize would be the start. And looking at the probe data, would be beneficial and advance us dramatically. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make an announcement to my crew here, our scientists, see who wants to leave. Um, we can operate with a pretty small crew here. The ship honestly is pretty damn well automated. Uh, it's, it's actually a pretty brilliantly designed ship. Uh, we have uh, Yakiv's uh, family to thank for that. But uh, if we can get uh, this probe data, figure out one of, these, one of these worlds is hospitable to us and conducive to our needs. I'd like to take a stab at one. I'd like to try to establish the first self-sustaining colony on one. I think that's my current goal. Not to have the first colony, not to be the first on, on a world, but to be the first to have a self-sustaining one. I look to Myrtle and I like gesture generally towards Pope and I say, May I? I'm at it. Why the hell should we help you? Well, this everything is you've said has been your dream to make a reality for something that because you couldn't have your dream before. I have some bad news for you, Mr. Pope. A lot of people go through the entire lives without any of their dreams coming true. And I think you need to realize that now your dreams might not ever come true. Oh. But wh why are you, why, why should we help you?
while I'm interested in establishing a colony, I'm not interested in running it. And I'm interested in having a diverse set of group of people that was a colony. I worry right now that uh, at some point some belters are going to fire off and go to build a colony and then Earthers are going to come in and just sweep up and take and steal it. But if we have a colony with of diverse interests of bringing people from around, we can show that that unity can work. And that's the only way forward. Um, I don't see any... I don't see a, a, a solid Martian colony working without violence. I don't see a solid UN colony working without violence. And I don't see a Belter colony working without being succumbed by violence. So I'd like to create the most peaceful path forward for all of us and to engage in some amazing research as well. See what we can learn from these things. So that you can be remembered as the hero. Possibly. Be nice. So could you. What makes you think, too, sorry, Zandy, what makes you think, too, we could steal this uh, probe debt access, yeah? Uh, we'll... <laughs> yeah. You kind of laugh. You, you, you've gone, uh, the crew of Sinclair has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with several uh, security forces in the past. You've survived previous battles, showing that you have cunning. Uh, your Kiev speaks highly of your operation on Hygieia Station. Yeah, we haven't gone to pick a fight, though. I don't think you're picking a fight here, either. Oh, I think that by going in and trying to steal things from Mars... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely picking a fight. We what, get if caught? I, what if I told you... I have a person on the inside. A lieutenant in the Martian Navy willing to deliver this to you. Or help you help you deliver this. You can say whatever you want. Yeah, you can say whatever you want. And also, you know, we can't even accept it or think about it without Wyatt having a say in this. Because oh. it's going to affect him the most. And there's no reason why we would do it anyways. There's nothing for us. There's, yeah, there's nothing what? here for us. Why, and you, why you say you're going to make this place that's an equal place for all people. I don't think you understand. This right here, the kind of like pointing towards the, the three of us... Mm. This is an irregular thing. Putting people together that are from different places is going to work for a little bit of time. But you put Earthers and Martians and Belters together in one place for long enough? You, you're trying to avoid violence. It's going to happen until people figure their shit out. So it doesn't matter if it's all Earth or all Mars or all whatever. Let me ask you a yep. question. Let me ask you a question, Zenny. The belt has undergone the pressure of two very distinct gravity wells for several hundred years now. How do you think the how do you think the belt are going to handle the pressure of thirteen hundred of those? We'll figure it out. I always have. It's gonna get messy. Um, I have some economists on board working, checking things mostly used for just seeing what our projections are for our certain activities and like but based on certain projections we suspect that um earth and mars powers are going to shift there'll be new powers rising up but one of the things that doesn't compute computes out consistently in these projections is the abatement of cultures your capacity to live under gravity is limiting Therapy and the drugs for it is limiting, unless you are in, and he looks back to Waxer in this gentleman's case. Um, there needs to be a way forward showing that we can make this all kind of work for everyone. Well, it's still not going to be fair, and it's going to cause the same problems because the belt doesn't have the resources that uh, the Earth and Mars do. It'll always be unfair on a planet, just as it is here. It's going to be the same dynamic. Yeah, you try you know, your, if, yep. You try your little experiments, but uh, you can leave us out of it. Uh, there's no reason why we need to help you anyways, yeah? <clears throat> I'm, I'm disappointed to hear this. I really am. I wanted to extend 
no pun intended, a hand forward and uh, see about establishing something with some genuine leadership. That's what this, my, well, I've been able to lead this, this staff and this team to some dramatic advancements. The, um, by force and deceased. He kind of laughs. He says, everyone here is by their own volition. They knew what they were signed up for. We did they? They did. did they? I promised them access to protomolecule scans, advanced information, research, and figure out. They had access to all of that. Well, you and, wouldn't have to lie to them if you'd just be honest with them. Well, that was largely... Like He kind of laughs. He says, Myrtle, you, you served in the Navy. I'm sure there have been plenty of times where senior staff didn't tell you everything. This you notice isn't I'm the not Navy. in the Navy still, right? This is also not, not the there. Navy. This yeah. isn't this isn't military. Mm. But we do this have This is again you. Security protocols need to be maintained to incor- and to make sure of the peace. Uh, I mean knowing that uh that many worlds exist out there. And by all means, I'm going to tell them. If it would make you feel if it would make you, every single one of you feel better, I'll tell them tonight. I'll go, I'll so, get you could have told them right a week ago. You could have told them a month ago. You could have told them as soon as they opened. Hey, you get on the you get on the speaker now. You tell them, and uh, you you let us take Pachenko too, our friend. It kind of takes a second. Thinks he says, "All right, I'll act in good faith." <laughs> he gets he goes up and he pulls up some panels on the computer and comes and uh, all kind of looks behind him and looks over stuff. And he says, "All right." Greetings, uh, uh, greetings, uh, Cryobrand. This is a message for all teams. I'm sending you information packets of some news stories from the last, uh, from two months ago that we held out, held off, uh, getting out to you. Um, you will find that the ring, while it is open, has opened up many more of these gates, and each gate seems to have a, a hospitable world on it, or in it. Uh, 1300 new suns, 1300 new worlds. Research and probing of these has taken place by the UN and the MCR. It's unclear what's on any of these, but we suspect that whatever alien intelligence built the protomolecule tech had access to all these. We have, we have, I didn't tell you for these several months for one reason simply. I was worried it might divert you from your projects here on how far we've come. And so you might view it as an opportunity to uh, engage in less than productive behavior. However, what I am offering is a way home. Those of you that don't want to leave uh, Cryobrand may do so, but know that our project is now pivoting towards these new worlds and what they can offer us and what we can learn. Um, those of you that are interested in leaving you have 48 hours to let us know uh if you're interested in leaving after that your contract will continue for the next six months as uh indicated thank you everyone for your participation and for your duty here and your job and your work on cryo brand uh this is sebastian pope al looks over and says all right they all know i'm in still you still haven't uh, said why why we would do this for you. Yeah, like Cap said, when Zeddy said, why we would help someone like you. I can't imagine wanting... To, I, I sat there and thought about it and tried to empathize with your situation, knowing what happened inside the ring, it's knowing how the OP Navy operated and how they, their first major operation, how things went. Um, honestly, it, it went better than... I, th- I think a lot of you had even imagined at points. I'm sure you thought worse things were going to happen. And we saw the threat and how, without the intervention of someone like James Holden, this could have gone into the, all of humanity. And I'm realizing there's now out there 1,300 opportunities to end human race completely. And I would like to put the proper resources forward with the proper people in charge to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, well, it's not up to you. What? So it's in the human race. He's in the human race. <laughs> I don't think he's saying well, the killer one. Yeah, you know, with what what happens, you know, if you're, if you're so confident about it, just go. 
Well, I like to bring in the best people, as I have here. And I think you are the best people. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, this might come as a surprise. It sounds like you had a lot of privilege growing up. Um, you don't always get what you want. I'm well aware. Well aware. He looks at his arm. You know, he's he's well aware. He's like, you well, could just take that off, by the way. The the whole arm. You could just have a new one grown for you. You, you don't have to. You deal understand with that. the. You understand. He looks at the Patel. He says they they don't know, do they? I thought they knew. Oh, that you have that funny little molecule on your on your arm there. I do. Yeah. Just cut the damn thing off. Throw it off into space. Well, there's a, there's a few issues. The, the, the mechanics of, of, uh, of limb regrowth aren't, aren't the best in low gravity, but um, throwing it off into space would be a waste of an opportunity and a waste to learn. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah, sure. Let me ask you this. Is it, do you... From my understanding, and rumor, rumor has it, so you think I've, I've captured and I, I'm keeping scientists prisoners here is that correct i don't know being on a being on a vessel in the middle of nowhere that has uh, no chance of going anywhere else as you said so yourself uh feels a bit like a prison ship <laughs> he goes and he pulls some numbers he pulls up an image you know he recognizes man and it's a it's a picture of a guy that kind of jumps a dirty ass jumpsuit it looks like a, kind of like so you see a scientist where he's got kind of scruffy hair he looks kind of shitty kind of like kind of uh his eyes look a little shaky, and you can see he's, there's like two uh, Martian uh, officers on each side of him. But the guy's definitely not Martian. Uh, it looks like an Earther. Was that James Holden? <laughs> and he says, <laughs> uh, "No, this is one Apollo Corazar." Now the name may not ring a bell for any of you, but Apollo Corazar was one of the scientists working on the Eros project. Prior to uh, Dresden's execution at the hands of uh, an OPA operative, um, Paulo Cortazar is one of the top experts on the protomolecule. Now, let me show you this. He goes over and shows another image, and it's a, it's a big open room. It looks like a fucking huge cargo container. Like, 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 it looks like the room where you put containers in. Okay. And uh, these images come courtesy of some rather greased palms, we'll say. And you can see, he zooms on one of the sections of this giant room, you can see it's Corazar. And there's a lot of these like scientists in these dirty uniforms. I mean, the place, it looks like there's like a bathroom in the corner, but there's no walls. There's like some chairs, not even really tables. There's like crap everywhere. I mean, it looks like a mess. But it's, and you're looking down on it, kind of like a basketball court type thing. It honestly looks like a like like a place you put like refugees into, like if you gotta put together a quick shelter. And um he goes, um all these scientists were taken from Thoth Station during uh James Holden and Fred Johnson's assault on it. These images come from only several uh weeks ago. Or so about two two, three months ago. Um Let me sh I mean, and then he's like, you'll notice this officer, he shows up with one of these Martian officers, and then he goes and shows them their image, and it's that officer taking hands with Anderson Dawes. Your OPA has held in captivity against their will without pay. We figure somewhere around 23 to 27 scientists. And has recently even sold one of them to the Martians. So when you want to talk about the ethics of my organization, why don't you take a look at the ethics of your organization and that ship you own? Shit, we know that, uh, you know, not everything is perfect out here, but we're not even talking about your operation. We're talking about you. Oh. We're talking about you. Okay. I, I, I see I see where you're going with this, Myrtle. Now I, now I can appreciate, Captain Cooper, where, where you're going with this. What if I promised you complete autonomy on establishing this colony? I, I give you the resources, I fund it. I give you access to my tech. Uh, 
we don't why would we even want to do that I can't imagine you still want to work for for okay navy thing i mean what's it gonna do i mean they're just gonna be a gas station now at this point running things to and fro each other location uh, at I mean, least we're working on being on our own and doing what we want to do oh i'm i'm really sorry we're at impasse here and I'm, I'm sorry we can't move forward with this i i really thought this would be an opportunity a lot of you would want to take me up on uh, and I didn't. I'm not interested in being threatening. I'm not interested in being aggressive. Um, I'm not interested in any of that. Uh, what I was interested in in those years back when uh, we, we had our run-ins was figuring out what Jules Pierre Mal was doing. And what Jules Pierre Mal was doing was unfathomable. None of us had any idea. By the time I figured out and got access to what he was working on, it was too late. Heroes was already on, on its way. Everything was spiraled out of control, and it almost cost us the Earth. Um, I was hoping to put more responsible hands, uh, put this this kind of future into more responsible hands, namely yours. But I can see you're not ready for that. That's I understand. That's fine. That's a lot. It's a lot to take on. I worry. I worry this frontier is going to be. Uh, gonna be a rootin' tootin' fun time with people like James Holden playing cowboy out on planet somewhere. Well, you're not wrong there. We have that. We can work with that then. You know, but, you know, I got a life. I got a family Bring back on. here. I got a business and I got a family here. I'm going to indicate everybody here and family on the ship. So, you know, and everybody here has someone, you know, that's doing their own things, that's making their, you know, making a living the way they make a living. And I can't just tell everybody, oh, we're just going to pack up and leave and leave everyone behind, leave everything that we've worked for. Just because you want to be remembered in history. Well, it's not even a matter of being remembered in history. It's just making a difference, making a real difference. Yeah, but who are you making a difference for? People of whatever this colony ends up, whatever this planet out there, with these 1300 worlds out there, and whatever they decide to call it, whatever they decide to name it. People on that, the, the children they're going to be, they're going to come up on that. Giving them a fight. You got a chance. structure already laid out? How are you going to find all these people? How are you going to do all of these things? All you've done is just say, do this stuff. We want you to do this stuff, but you haven't given us still any kind of concrete information about what it is that you want us to do. Well, manage a I'm, colony i mean <laughs> what well first thing i need to I have to do is find a planet and unfortunately i don't have the capability to send my own probes through nor do i have enough probes to begin uh, tackling this business this big of a ask what i'm interested in is getting access to the data currently going on now i don't think any of you are particularly fond of and i certainly know that mr thompson is not particularly fond of the martian navy um Getting access to some of their, their uh, decryptors would be put us ahead of the game substantially before waiting for UN charters to tell us, UN and Martian charters telling the belters which planets they can and can't go. That's the problem, is I think that the power structure is going to stick around. I don't think it's going to change without people taking the initiative. That's where I'm... I'm standing with it. Listen, I this is a lot to take in, everyone. I, I really I really appreciate your time. Um, I want to make sure that you're welcome to any food sources you want here. If you want to grab anything, you're welcome to it. Um, if you want to take, uh, I have a little bit of reserves here. If you're welcome to any points, like some bottles of wine that he has uh, locked up. Um, well, why don't you take some time, think on this, 48 more hours of dock time. Uh, he's like, he, looks at the, he looks at the watch. It's about 40 more hours. And um, from there, We'll figure it out. And if you and um, and that and I'd like you to stick around for that time duration. That way, if you want to take back any of my science crew that wants to leave, you're more than welcome to. And they will be compensated, obviously, uh, metered out for their time they served here. They won't get the full contract, but they will get their portion of the time they did serve. Well, before anything happens, we got to go back and we got to talk to Wyatt and the Absolutely. rest of the crew. Absolutely. 100 percent. Not a problem. Uh, do know that my uh, attack ship is 
uh, hidden out there, waiting, <laughs> and is uh, just in case. I don't want um, this, and this is not a uh, armed ship, so be aware that uh, attacks on us would be just blatant slaughter of all the of all the scientists on here. And he pulls up some screens. You can see there's like there's like huge science labs. There's like tons of them, and you can see all of them are being worked on. And some of the people that were kind of looking through data paths looks like they're actually reading this news stories and everything about these worlds. And other people are just like they're back to work. So, um, he goes, all right. Uh, he says, uh, he goes through and he says a few like letters and numbers real quick. And, he, and then he says, I'll reissue all security protocols. Uh, Patel, please, uh, escort them back to the Sinclair. And Patel goes, oh, uh, please, can you ask you guys to stand up? And Hope stands up uh, behind his desk, um, buttons his jacket and thank you for, thank you for taking the time. I, your time was very, is, Deeply appreciated here. Sure. Okay. All right. You guys can go back to the ship. Yep. Uh, yeah. Back to the ship. Yeah. All right. Go back to the ship, and they give you all your stuff back uh, when you go to the security the security desk. Um, you come back on. Go through it. Why you get the airlock notification saying like they're through? And you can see them on the camera and everything. Um, the signals are coming back through now. Uh, once they get past the stealth coding, and uh, they're yeah they're there. As soon as the airlock doors close on our side, Zenny says, Who the fuck did this guy think he is? <laughs> Just a rich asshole. What'd you guys, what was that all about? Yeah, He's a rich asshole. Oh, that Koyo's got some, yeah, he's something else, yeah. What's his plan? What is? What did he want from us? Well, he, there's a few things that he says he wants, but there's no actual plan. He wants us to figure out his dirty work for him. Yeah. He, he says, here's what he says he wants. He says he wants to not be the first to do, he, he wants to establish a colony on one of these, one of these other ring worlds that's free and fair for everyone. And he wants it to be sustainable and blah, 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 blah. But, and I look towards like Myrtle and Waxer. I mean, we can't forget that his motivation for coming out here in the first place is because he's, he wanted to be the first to do a thing. And then his dream doesn't come true. And so now he wants to shift it to make, he wants us to make his dream a reality by stealing, oh, by stealing Martian information. Yeah, he wants us to put ourselves in danger by getting, uh, accessing a probe for information and then the Koyo, he wants, uh, you know, but he does know something about my past and he wants my samples and blood. Oh, he was yeah. all, to be fair, he only, only if you're willing to give him up, he wasn't going to yeah. take him. You're, you're, you would be the cherry on top of the ass, you know. <laughs> so as everything he set out for, you know, he sat there and told you, is it worth it? Do we get anything from it? Or is it all something for him? No, I mean, I, I mean, it seems like he wants to put us in charge of his little operation. Yeah, but so that that's what I got from it, at least. Is he willing to buy or, you know, give us the money to buy our ship back? No, he wants us to go and be part of this colony on a different world. As a part of the OPA Navy? Because we're kind of contracted in with the OPA for who knows how long. He was a, a little vague on that. <laughs> he said that he wants all the best people on his team, and he always gets the best. So whatever that means. So we're the best. We're the best at this plan that he has. We're the, we're the best that he can get. We're the most dispos disposable. Yeah, I mean. Sounds like to me. I mean, there's nothing, there's no indication that we'd even be good at something like this. What do we know about running a planet or starting oh, a colony? Brave, or... though. I mean, look, I, I, hey, I, I was colony starting a new life. All these things, hey, waxer, it's good to waxer, but uh, I don't know under these terms or for this guy, yeah? <clears throat> so. What are you thinking, Cap? I just, you know, I'm, I don't trust him, and I don't see how this would will go well. Um, here's, here's to be my fair, problem. do we trust anybody? <laughs> well, that is that is <laughs> outside of the. You mean outside of us? Um, not many people. 
My problem um, is, if this was brought up by, by not anyone else, but almost anyone else, it would be a good idea. I understand what he's saying, that, you know, going to these new places sounds like a great idea. It, it sounds like a great idea to go and see them, especially if it means that Belters can have a planet to live on instead of having to just live in the belt. But I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, he he looking at me real creepy, like, yeah. He's a he's an entitled earther who's used to having whatever he wants. And yep. now he's sad and he's pitching a fit because he can't get what he wants. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if he had somebody else to go steal all that stuff, that would still sound like a better idea than us doing it. Right? <sighs> Because we won't get well, very he far. Some, if... He has some sort of Martian on the inside anyway. Why doesn't he just get that Martian to come and fly out here and give it to him? Yep. Yeah, or, we got, you know... him, got him to tell his crew. Yeah, we tell them to hey, let him uh, stay with the mission or leave. So really, that's all, all I wanted at the moment, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For I those thought... of you who are listening, John sent us a picture of what Pope looks like. And he looks like a rich, entitled fucking asshole. Is what he looks like. I'll, oh I'll my throw, god! I'll throw the image in the. I'll throw the link in yeah, the chat. I was like, I got. I can't believe it. The cover of Abzu's bounty. He got so, him. So those oh. don't know, the Sebastian Pope is the villain of of Abzu's bounty. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I feel oh, zero shame. Right. Zero no, shame. No, no, you're spot on, man. <laughs> We're good. You got. You got to read. Him you got. I pictured I, him older. Well, here's the thing: is like, I, well, he is older now, actually, because it's been four yeah, years. Okay. So he is a little older, but um, I will say this. Apparently, I did a good enough job describing the dude and playing him because he fucking looks so stupid. <laughs> 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 um, the attitude was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was there. So, All right, listen, uh, this is what I think. I hate this guy more than anybody in this fucking solar system. <laughs> but it is an opportunity to get away from the OPA and be our own whatever it would be, our own entity and control our own destiny if we can convince him to buy our share free and clear where we get our shit back we will solve all that money from dingo that we could use to better people in a new planet to help people that that's what we want to do in the first place I mean, and look, then after we get that all set up we kill him you better give us stealth tech you better give us torpedoes. Hey, I'll give him some samples for some stealth tech. Some... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's gotta be. Listen, okay, okay, but that's something we have. We that's something that we started the conversation with. I never came back to is how the hell does he know about your right the whole project? Yeah, I don't. That I don't know. He probably so, has something so to do with it. Why you can you can offer some insight? I mean, you had the whole thing with Diana, and you're still unclear on who the fuck she was working for. Um, yeah. She said she was a Martian Secret Service agent. She was definitely a Martian and knew shit about Mars. But like, was she working for Pope or was she working against Pope? And then um, you know that Pope had advanced like security people that were working for him too. Um, and this was the guy that's on. Par this guy was on par with Jules Pierre and Mao until Mao beat him out to the probe molecule. That's what it came down to. God, this. <laughs> It's a fucking pissing contest. <laughs> like, <I'm> so <laughs> crazy. It makes me so mad. <laughs> well, so I, 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 the one thing about Pope I, I feel sympathetic for is his element. Basically, his whole his whole plan, his whole thing in Abzu's bounty is that somehow, like, he doesn't understand why, like, Jules Perrimau abandoned all these projects. He's like, why the hell would this guy abandon all this? What's worth it that would make you abandon almost everything you're working on prototype? And he's like, there has to be something out there. And he's trying. He's trying to unravel the conspiracy with everyone else too. Um, he just kind of has an edge because he's on that level and he has the resources. But yeah, he does seem to have a pretty good um, intelligence network, it seems. He did seem to keep that intact somehow. This thing about this thing about these scientists the OPA has been holding in prisoner for, a for almost half a decade, that's like pretty shocking to some of you. Because like Dawes was like, yeah. no, we don't do that shit. Yeah. Fred Johnson's like, we don't do that shit. But apparently Fred Johnson was the one that turned these guys over. Or he knew about it somehow or never didn't question it. So there's a lot of questions about the ethics of the OPA here going on. That does to to Zenny, that doesn't surprise any at all. Like seeing that was like 
Cool, 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 cool. The Belters just became exactly what the Earthers and the Martians were. Cool, 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 cool. To be, cool, to be cool, fair, cool. these guys Great. are. These, we're these, all equal now. <laughs> to, to, to be fair, these guys are responsible for the genocide of a million Belters. So, like, ah, uh, you know, it, it's it's the whole kind of Nazi thing where you kind of put you you put them in prison and you're not really sure what to do with them for a while. And but it turns out Selman of the Martians is the big thing. So, uh, you get a Werner von Braun situation here. So, yeah, but. Yeah, the ethics are hard. <laughs> politics and ethics are hard. Politics in space? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's scaled. It can scale up further. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Um, yeah. So, okay. Um, and you guys can communicate with Pope here on the ship, too. You guys, he, he has lines fed, so you guys can actually directly communicate without broadcasting stuff around. Yeah, okay. It's the same. Well, do we yeah, have, like, is he giving us, like, a time frame to think this through? You guys got about under forty. You guys got about under forty or about thirty-eight hours. So well over a day, and, and that's, yeah, that that lines up with this with the 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 offer he made to the scientists because he's like, they, you guys can take mm-hmm. them with them. You guys, if they want to leave, they can leave with you. Take the I mean, I really, really hate this guy, and I want to see him dead. But I think the opportunity is pretty, pretty amazing on the same side. As long as we can get some things. You should make a wish list. I mean, good. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm liking this. It's like, first of all, we don't go steal anything from Mars. Somebody else steals things from Mars. Mm -hmm. To be fair, he does have an agent. He does have a plant that's going to do the stealing. He says it's a Martian, um, like, officer. He says a lot of things, (laughs) though. I mean, if that's why I don't want to live on any promises. And I think Zenny makes that like perfectly clear to everyone. He makes a lot of promises. I don't care. I don't care what the hell words come out of his mouth. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> we don't care how he gets it from Mars to him or whatever, but we don't want to be involved in because if something goes wrong, then we're on the, we're on Dawes's radar again. Right, and then we have no chance of tr- of having the sh- our shares bought out, so yeah. we can have our own ship again. Yeah, he needs to have uh, someone else, some other third party, do that, or his agent. Yeah, meet us somewhere with that information, or decryption tech. Yeah, I don't want but, uh, yeah, maybe we get some some stuff for the ship. Yeah, I want to own the- this ship before this is all said and done. Without spending a single dime of our own money. Maybe we get Bachenko yes. too, yeah? Too. Well, we still got to look out. You know, we've say, got oh, sorry, family. Gonna, yeah. I was going to say too, uh, Scott, you just, just you guys call him entitled. And you're like, I want to own this ship without spending a single dime of my own money. <laughs> 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 I was laughing about that shit. Like, <laughs> 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 Who's this dumb motherfucker? <laughs> Damn, dude. But like, you know, yeah, he's a rich guy. We want his money. We want his money and his ship. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, no, but I mean, I got to talk to S- S- Samilla. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we can't just make the decisions for our loved give me, ones. Give me a business test, Myrtle. Uh, business. Oh, you're I actually good business. at business. Yeah, that's why I had you do it because you're smart at the business. I'm smart. Uh, fine. 17. All right. So the luxury good business has been hard. It's going to be even like you think it's going to do well at all when people are going for colonies. Yeah. So series is going to dry up is what it comes down to. Yeah. Well, really it's about- more that I, I got to talk my wife into yeah. leaving her only home that she's ever known. Because yeah, I don't want to go without her. That's fair. There's always I mean, we don't know what's on the other side. Who knows what opportunities lay. And, and to be clear to the other side, that's why Pope wants to steal these Martian things so he can know what the hell yeah. on the other side. So yeah. you're, you, you're, you're asking the same questions he is, and he's like, here's, yeah. the, here's the way to answer it. All right, and, you go. Yeah. It's like, so, okay, so we want Pope to get his probe, however he wants to get it. Don't involve us in that. <laughs> when it comes to yeah. planning everything else and finding a planet, then we'll engage. And uh, But we still have to talk to everyone that we need to talk to. Um, I I should also I would like to point out too if if he can get those codes off of Mars, 
into our hands, I have no problem bringing them back to him. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to go yeah. back to Mars. I don't want to step well, foot he, on that soil. He did. He did say that you guys would be stealing from Callisto, not from Mars. If you wanted, to, if, so basically it goes like this: If you want to get the raw data, you can just go to uh, Mars and steal the data. That's going to be the hardest way to do it. But you would get everything. The other way is to go to Callisto to get a decryption module, so he can actually start intercepting the data. That would be the and Callisto. The... You guys have been to Callisto before. That's where you guys uh, right. have the TV news network. You guys, you guys busted heads in. So you do have, you know, you have a. That's where you got your tattoo, at, sir. Yeah. Full circle. It's full circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need, to, like you said, kind of come up with a good list of things we want out of this, yeah. and then see what he's willing to offer us in return. All right. I don't trust him, though. Not so here's, here's my here's my offer for the, the crew as the game master tonight. We can we can stop the session tonight and you guys <laughs> can go on the discord and put your list of demands. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be and a long then, list. Then, cause gonna be, no, because I know it's going to be a fucking long list. It's only a two hour show to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, it, it's middle management, the RPG, and this is, this yeah. is my module, contract negotiation. <laughs> so right. so uh, you guys would then uh, come back with that list, and then next week, or when we meet next, because we have a break next week, um, when we meet next, we would then have the negotiation for that and go from there. Okay with that. Yep. Does that oh, sound like a good uh, plan for the game? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I throw my blood samples in for the uh, for the extra stuff when we want to make <laughs> throw your boat. blood. Just throw it. I sign the contract in blood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Stun> um, tech. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's kind of interesting. You, you bring up that element to, uh, you know, your physique has kind of puzzled your uh, current uh, med tech critty, and um, they're kind of talking about how like they've never met a belter that was like already ready for gravity well stuff. And so you're even thinking now that like maybe there's something to that like Pope could use to help the Belters get plant side yeah. easier, faster. Because um, even the drug and the treatments, I mean, it's a long time to do it. It's not 100% guarantee. It's like an 85% chance of success, but it's it's better than it's better than the 30 percent chance of, of you surviving yeah. the first few months there. But like, yeah. So I mean, it is something. I mean, all these planets. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. Okay, so you guys are gonna sit there and kind of hash it out. You guys got like a few. You guys got like a day or so. Um, you can simply talk to anybody else too. What we'll do is I'll set this up on the Discord. I'll set up a, a, a Google Drive or a Google document for you guys to type your demands into. I have a lot then, of memory. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and there will be there will be there will be a chocolate cream pie delivered to us weekly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only red M and M's. Fresh yeah. coffee. Only red. M &Ms, yeah. Only red. Yeah, 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 yeah. Only red. Yeah. If I see a green yeah, yeah. M and M. Fucking done. Yeah. It's over. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, we'll 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 come back to that uh, on our when we return in uh, October on the what is that the twelfth I think we're on I think we're back here on the the twelfth yeah so okay cool so we're gonna we're gonna stop the game there tonight because we could we had a negotiation impasse that's okay um, and uh, the like so you just you I, made him so much of an asshole I which did. is great because he is. sucks. <laughs> I don't think you're. I think that's what happened. What happened to you, Maria, tonight is that you weren't prepped for that amount of asshole. No. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> but it was a lot. It was a lot of asshole to take Sunny's in. Sunny's dealt. Sunny's <laughs> dealt with a, a too many Earthers who have tried to do things that are for the good of everyone mm -hmm. that are very self-centered, and it's starting to become a trend, <laughs> and they're not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so what I'm going to do tonight is we still have our, our giveaway still going. Uh, let me go ahead and put the information. So the word tonight is cryo. Uh, and while I'm waiting for people to enter that, I am going to do a few announcements for everybody. So um, we are doing here in October, we have two events uh, set up or two, two kind of cool things, actually three things. Uh, I'll be back next week. I don't have a promo for it because I, I usually don't put them together for this, but uh, I'll be back next week with the with the precipice where I just kind of hang on and chat. Um, I'm going to have um, Zero uh, on here. Uh, Vester, I think is, is it Zester? Zester. No, Jester. I, That's I another it. lovely human being. Yeah, so I'm going to have um, <laughs> Zero on next week. Uh, let me put that in chat. 
Uh, we'll be chatting about the expanse and prop making with the expanse because I've gotten I've gotten exposed to a lot of cosplay and stuff with the expanse folks and uh, the, the guys that go to a dragon con with the full blown Martian armor are freaking nuts like that shit blows mm -hmm. my mind. Um, they, they, they're actually, they actually had a, they had enough of them there this, this year. There was a full squad, um, which is pretty terrifying. Um, so I'll be hanging out with Zero next week, which will be nice. Um, our next announcement comes in terms. We'll do a chronological order here. Uh, we will have a special guest playing with us on the Wednesday, October nineteenth. Here it is it will be one April Reagan. I love uh, April so much. We'll be playing Lieutenant Un Kim, a MCRN Lieutenant Pilot. <sighs> Lieutenant Wait. Pilot. I can't imagine. That sounds really familiar for some reason. I can't imagine why. MCRN? Yeah. Oh! Watching Congressional Republic. She's playing our contacts. <laughs> but you don't want to play with her, right? So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so we'll figure out how that. No, okay. I, got, I, got, I, got, I have. We'll figure it out. If you, April and I are used to yelling at each other. So well, that'll be fun. fun. I'm, I'm into that. <laughs> I want to see that actually. That'll be a lot of fun actually. And then uh, we're doing, we're making an annual now. This is our second one. The show's only been on for a little over a year now. Um, will be our second charity horror one shot uh, where we kind of do a thing where everyone's going to die uh, or possibly die. This one, I don't, I don't guarantee death on this one actually. I'm not guaranteeing oh. death on this one. Uh, Escape from Eros, it was like, yeah, there is no Escape from Eros. That was a bullshit claim. <laughs> um, it was a trick. It was, yeah. a, it was absolutely a trick. Uh, I will say this there was some great death. Uh, Troy, Troy got shot, you got <laughs> infected, and then I think uh, Sam got stabbed by the other player in her sleep. <laughs> and, the, uh, and then the other ones had come to radiation poisoning and the protomolecule. <laughs> and it was pretty brutal. Sure. It was, yeah, it was pretty gruesome. It was a good, it was a good yeah. one. Um, but I mean, look, it's, it's, uh, if you read the books, uh, the Aero Sensitive, it's, it's, it's oh, bad. Yeah. <laughs> and there's <laughs> zombies. Um, but our, our one here this month, I call, uh, it's going to be called uh, Kindless Rise. For a charity one shot, we have uh, Donna's gonna be playing with us, Maria's gonna be playing us from, from the crew here. In addition, we have returning uh, Jorge Martinez, a, a, uh, he's actually gonna return us as a character from you play with us. And we have uh, two newcomers, uh, one of them is Lynn uh, Nagasone, who is our illustrator who did our cool backgrounds. Uh, if you, if you when I come back to the thing, uh, you'll see the, the backgrounds that they did and then all our illustrations. And then we have Lauren Urban, uh, uh, Lauren Obo, Obo, uh, who was Obo very cool Urban. and then gracious enough to come on over. Uh, Lauren, agree as soon as I told Lauren that um, it was a uh, Jorge's idea uh, to invite her, Lauren said yes, pretty much. So they they love oh, Jorge, yeah. and Jorge is a, a great dude. Um, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be take place on one of the new worlds. It's gonna be kind of be, it's kind of be. Um, I will say that it takes place during the Free Navy conflict, so the world is cut off. Um, and it should be pretty. It should be pretty fun. Actually, I'm looking forward to that one a lot. And I uh, was still kind of getting characters knocked out, and everything too. But that's the the cast. Um, and obviously, I will be running the game. Um, and we'll be here on the 26th. And we're gonna play for um, our charity. We're gonna be benefiting. I don't have it on the slide yet. Is um, World Central Kitchen, who provides meals uh, across the world. Uh, they're currently doing efforts in Puerto Rico. Um, and uh, they've done efforts wherever there's problems. They go to bring food, and they, they do damn good work everywhere. So we're trying to uh, we're gonna try to help them out a little bit. And we got some cool stuff coming from. Uh, I got I got I still have some green run stuff to give away, and uh, or for the, for the incentives to donate, which were huge last time for our last charity stream marine cycle. Uh, a lot of people, everyone actually went a lot of people went for the uh, the big bundles, uh, the hundred dollar bundle from green running that was super cool, and the like. So. Yes, we have a, a great crew lot coming up here in October, and I look forward to hanging out with everybody. Uh, once again, last chance to enter the giveaway, and I'd be remiss to, to remind you that we have a Patreon. Uh, Patreon is a great way to support us, to help us out and keep the stream going, um, to pay these people, to pay for cool resources. We have a lot of great, uh, we have great art, we have some great music, um, and uh, so all that stuff does go to benefit that. I am going to go ahead and put a name. I have to click the button. And I have to click the button. It's a quick here we go. Uh, let me go ahead and pull the button, and I'm gonna push it. Oh, there it is. And it is Filtergar. Filtergar. Nice. Barry, you won. Congratulations. Uh, Barry? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need any more miniatures in our house. <laughs> I, I, if, he, if he's willing to relinquish, I mean, he's right there. If, you, if he's willing to relinquish, I can pull someone else. I'll leave ah. that up to him. Okay. All right. Uh, but yeah, we uh, we got a uh, I got a cool, we'll send we'll send Barry a cool set of uh, Stonehaven miniatures, and yes, I have been to your house and it, it is it is a lot. 
Well, they're not these ones. Nope. <laughs> Never can have too many. Come on. No, it, it, it's, it gets shocking, Max. I, I've been actually lo kind of looking at my um, my, my miniature stack, and actually have, I, I sent a, I actually sent Jorge like probably close to like 30 miniatures for free. Cause I was like, oh, I didn't get rid of these things, man. He's like, I need miniatures with paint. Where do I get them? And I was like, hey, yeah. check nice. your mailbox in three days. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so, but very cool. Uh, Pildergar, we'll, we'll get those out to you, no problem. Um, but we're back next week with the Precipice talking to Zero. After that, then we're back with, uh, we got two regular episodes for the rest of the month. Then we have our charity stream. And then we're back in November with a few episodes to kind of follow up. And I'm really curious where this is going to go. And I want to, I am, yeah. Very much looking forward to looking at the contract negotiations that'll go on beyond the scene here. Um, I will say this: I will, I will post those to the Patreon. Nice. I know that will be a premiere. Oh, nice. You, you can, you can. I might even put a link in there so they can actually, if they really wanted to monitor the contract <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of bonus content we're. we're yeah, here if for you really want to get the quality like content it. that I you're gonna it. get. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, like other people have like art previews and like Q and As, and we're like, hey, it's contract negotiations on Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. Freaking middle management and space guys. All right. Uh, we will see you all. Uh, I'll see you guys all next week, and uh, we'll see the game through back here a little bit. Bye. And you guys take it easy. Bye.